everyone talks, Ian, about, you know, technology and yeah. new yeah. weapons, as they always do in every war and every time and every decade. And yet, the truth of it is, as Ukraine proves, and indeed, as the Gulf War proved with us, at the end of the day, without boots on the ground, there isn't much you can do. And the current projection is for the British Army to shrink to 73,000 people. And these massive shrinkages of manpower in the RAF, the Royal Navy, the Army, they've all happened under 13 years of Tory rule. They have, and I think the trouble always with these things, and I was in government, I was also in the Army too, by the way, I served in Northern Ireland as well as Rhodesia. You need a, an army. Otherwise, you can't deploy. You can't deploy at home, and you certainly can't deploy abroad. And when I was in, the army was 150,000 strong. Yeah. Uh, I always thought around 100,000 would be about right. Once you start dipping below that, it's very difficult then to do the multiple operations that are necessary. So part of the target of getting the finance up is also to get recruitment back up. Now, sometimes when the economy is growing well, it's difficult to get recruitment. Yeah. But we have to aim to get more boots as you say, on the ground, and on the ground here in the UK to fulfil the numbers that we're after. I think that's what the Defence Secretary was on about, quite rightly. Mm. The second thing is we do need to have the machines, the vehicles and the technology to support them. I get that. Otherwise they get a I seriously get bloody nose when they go into action. And we've given away a lot of that. That's fine, because I back Ukraine 100%. Got to resupply it, though. That means a commitment from the government for extra money. China. Boris Johnson, self-declared Sinophile, much of his own family. Sino files. Rishi Sunak, I'm desperately confused. What's the position? He runs to be leader. He says that China could pose an existential threat. He then becomes prime minister and calls it a strategic threat. Yesterday, he says it's an epoch defining challenge. Where the hell are we on China? Well, we're moving. That's in, that's in, uh, well, what on earth does that mean? No, well, as you know, it, it, you, you grab what you've got and then you take it somewhere else. So, in my view, Rishi Sunak started uh, by saying they were an existential threat. They were to a challenge, but the truth is they are a threat. They're a multidimensional threat, whether it's commerce, whether it's IPs, whether it's actually trade, uh, whether it's war, defence, military invasion. They've already invaded the South China Seas. They're carrying out terrible human rights abuses, genocide amongst the Uyghur, Christians getting smashed, the Tibetans are in forced labour camps. We, you don't need much more evidence to know. This country is now a threat and growing to be a greater threat. And yet we've made ourselves dependent upon them. Well, this is the whole problem. Uh, and it happened, I'm afraid, very much under the watch. Uh, started under Tony Blair, continued by, I'm afraid, the government that I was a part of. The George Osborne. Decade, the George Osborne decade. thought this was our future, I Ian. I know. And I'm afraid, you know, I was against it at the time. The golden decade yes. has turned out to be nothing but a lot of fool's gold. And the truth is, too many businesses rush to China to get stuff made cheaply. They abandon the idea you need to make some things at home. And the, with the new manufacturing techniques, you can do a lot of this stuff back here. It doesn't require huge labour. So what we've got to do is start finding our allies to move that sort of production to and also to bring some of it home. And is Sunak the man to do that? Uh, well, he has come a long way now because this latest... <laughs> I, I say this generally because I was very critical yesterday. <laughs> yeah. But the one thing I will say is they are now across... If you read all the language of this, it's quite clear they are across the idea that China is genuinely a threat. They don't want to say it publicly, but it's clear from the document that they recognise the threat. It's a growing threat and it's multidimensional. What I want them to do is to eventually say, yes, China is a threat. It's a dangerous threat. It's a threat to their own people. It's a threat to us and the way we live our lives. And right now, all the idea that they're going to help us with Russia is for the birds. They vote against us all the time in the UN. I know. In fact, and they're talking about technology going to Russia right now as well. These are big there's moments. There's a powerful alliance big on moments. the other side building up. Completely.